For the last 24 hours, as a futurist, I've been taking questions from all over the world via Twitter on global trends. And a repeated question has been this. The world is clearly becoming short of water due to climate change and the growth of population. But how serious could that shortage get? And could it be possible for one nation to be at war against another over water supply? Well, the answer is clearly yes, and I'll show you an example of why. In Uganda in 2006, the level in Lake Victoria, which is the beginning of the River Nile, uh, fell to uh, catastrophic levels. In fact, uh, fishermen couldn't even get to the boats because the level of the river was so low. They had to walk right across the river, uh, right across the, 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 the bed of the Lake Victoria to even get their fishing boats pushed out. And because of this, the Uganda government decided to reduce the flow of the River Nile by 33%. Now, you may not think that's very significant, but the fact is that that river is the lifeblood not only of Sudan, but of course of Egypt, which is a, a country surrounded by desert. And without the flow of that Nile, uh, the, those economies further downstream are profoundly affected, or potentially so. Now, this stoppage of the River Nile happened at almost overnight with no consultation. It happened in 2006, and it was in direct violation of an international treaty which safeguards the flow of the River Nile as something uh, that is a human right for all those uh, to enjoy the water uh, along its, its several thousand mile route. Could war have broken out over that? Well, I'm not saying it could, but the fact is it shows how nations are locked together in a survive together or die together, how one nation's activity at one point in a river can uh, have profound implications for another nation's economic activity and well-being further down. And we've seen similar things happen in Europe over the River Danube, for example. We've seen it where one nation may pollute upriver and make the river undrinkable further down uh, uh, in another nation's territory. We've seen it um, in, 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 in areas where people have overpumped. We've seen it in one region inside one country and then another region inside the same country suffering and the potential for conflicts there. So, yes, water is a very scarce resource. It's absolutely fundamental to civilization and to economic growth. And unless that resource is managed for the good of all, then we will see conflict. Now, there are bigger questions as to how to manage water supply. And of course, reservoirs and things like that are part of that solution. But there are other issues we can think of as well. For example, growing crops absorbs an enormous amount of water. It requires a huge amount of water. It's up to 2,000 liters of water for one kilogram of grain, for example, and several times that for one kilogram of meat. And that's because, of course, animals eat the grain and they also need water for themselves. So we need to understand that agricultural demands can create a crisis inside a country where water is scarce. And one of the ways to import water is actually to import grain. It's a kind of virtual trade in water, if you think about it. Let's take, for example, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia can irrigate uh, fields uh, artificially in the desert and grow crops. Or it can buy wheat. If it buys wheat, it releases water that is very scarce for other purposes, drinking, um, washing, and so on. So water and food are very much in close relationship together. Now, what about the long-term impact of water shortages? You know, if we could solve the energy problem, hmm, you might think that's a very great challenge, and it is, especially with global warming and the worries about using too much carbon and releasing carbon dioxide. But if we could, over the next 30, 40, 50, 60, or 100 years, if we could develop a low-cost source of energy which had an almost infinite capacity for renewal, perhaps using a technology like nuclear fusion rather than fission, which splits atoms and creates a lot of dirty product, but fusion, which has very little um, uh, 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 potential for abuse by terrorists. It doesn't produce um, uh, material for <laughs> nuclear weapons. It's a different, cleaner technology. It's a technology that we could run for many thousands of years. If nuclear fusion could be used to develop next generation energy of almost infinite amount at relatively low cost, then we could have, in theory, the possibility of solving part of the global water shortage by using that energy to convert seawater into fresh water. Now, that maybe is a long way into the future, but you think back to the beginning 
of the 20th century, at the end of the 19th century, a time when we hardly knew how electricity worked, a time when we didn't know how to get off the ground and how to make planes work, a time when something like a rocket was science fiction, a time when telephones had yet to be uh, really uh, properly used. Just imagine what the future could bring in terms of scientific innovation. And don't rule anything out, because we may well find there are fundamental solutions to water shortages in the longer term.